Shalom, beloved. A word. When I got up this morning and I began to pray and commune with the Most High in my heart, he gave me a word, the book of Nahum. And as I read it, he told me that the judgment for Nahum, that Nahum had pronounced against Nineveh, was the judgment of Babylon. And whereby Nineveh repented, Babylon has not and will not. The judgment has gone forth. Just like in the days of the first Egypt, when Pharaoh's heart was hardened, the spirit of Pharaoh is on this land of Egypt, our captivity, Babylon, and the heart is hardened. They make laws trying to once more confine, control, and commit lawless acts against Yasharel. But what they don't know is they have speeded up the judgment. Just as the Most High has speeded up time, that speed up is speeding up their judgment. I'm going to share so that you will see what he showed me in various books, starting with the book of Nahum. Nahum chapter one, verse two. God is jealous and the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The same judgment and wrath that he had towards Nineveh for what they were doing to Yasharel in the days of Nahum is the same wrath and judgment that he has for Babylon. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and he will not acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. When I first read this, I thought of Jonah, because Jonah prophesied against the city of Nineveh for 40 days. And as he walked throughout the midst of the city, the people repented. And the Lord did not perform the judgment in those days, although Nineveh was, in fact, later on, sacked by the Persians and Babylon, and the city slowly crumbled to nothing over time. But Jonah... At first, he fought against the Lord's prophetic word. And when I first heard the spirit tell me that Nahum, in Nahum was also the judgment of Babylon, it brought to mind that prophet Jonah, who he fought against the Lord's word and he was swallowed up by a whale. Well, beloved, I will not be swallowed up. I will speak what the Most High put on my heart, in my spirit. We are still in chapter 1, verse 6. Who can stand before his indignation and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good and a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knoweth them who trust in him. Yes, beloved. As we sit in this vile city, this lawless nation that invents and reinvents itself with laws to crush Yasharev, the Most High is jealous. And he is revenging what has been done, not just to his people, but against his holy name. But the overrun, but with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies right now. 
Babylon is running to and fro, trying to use crafty counsel to subject Yasharel. Yet again, we look in the state of Georgia by a governor who stole the election the first time from Stacey Abrams. Now he wants to make laws to control how voters are treated. Going back to that Jim Crow Old South attitude while claiming that he means no one any harm, it was in the state of Georgia that the vote was recounted three times and yet he's trying to hold up the fact that he's just trying to ensure the quality of the vote where it needs no insurance. Now we look further. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not arise a second time. You see, as Babylon's end comes, they are trying to position themselves to not only keep power, but to retake it in such a way that it grows stronger and repeats itself up second time. No, beloved, no. When we look in the book of Ezekiel, because the Lord was moving me throughout the word, showing me, we are in the book of, our, of Ezekiel chapter 22, starting at the second verse. Now, thou son of man, wilt thou judge? Wilt thou judge the bloody city? Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Yes, yes. The bloody city. When we look in the book of Nahum and we go to chapter three, it speaks again of that bloody city. Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. It is full of lies and robbery, beloved. The world is watching this bloody city. That is its trademark. It's its stamp. It is a bloody city. The noise of a whip and the noise of rattling of the wheels and the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. It's talking about its military might that it is known for. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear and there is a multitude of slain. Yes, beloved, when you look at the history, there is a multitude of slain people in this bloody city. Whether you talk about the native indigenous people murdered without number and a great number of carcasses. We are in the book of Nahum, chapter three, verse three. Yes. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear spear and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses the graveyard of babylon there this city this this bloody nation is a graveyard of a testament of its true nature there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses there is none end of their corpses. They continually murder, continually, and the Most High has passed judgment. And unlike the city of Nineveh that repented, Babylon will not repent. Babylon's heart is hardened. This spiritual Egypt, like the first Pharaoh, Babylon's heart is hardened. There is none in of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. The great massive number of those they have murdered 
innocent blood. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. Yes, yes, yes. Babylon was well-favored at one point. Merchants and money flowing like water. The mistress of witchcraft that selleth nations through her whoredom. Yes, yes, they sold nations. They robbed them of their resources. They took their lands. They took them, brutalized and murdered, raped, pillaged their people. Yes, and families through her witchcraft. Yes, beloved. We are in the book of Nahum, chapter three. We're going back over the fourth verse. Because of the multitude of her whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts. Yes, yes that sell of nations mm, through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. Yes, beloved, not only were families sold during the days of the enslavement, those same said families, the heirs, the descendants are being sold even as we speak. They're, they're witchcrafts, they're, they're evil. Even when you look at the 13th Amendment, that loophole, that slavery is illegal everywhere in the United States except as punishment for crime. They have used that loophole, beloved. They have sold families through their whoredoms. How so? They sell their labor for free. They enslave them with unjust law unjust laws, okay? Clinton, in his presidency, militarized the police, but that militarization of the police force was only unleashed on the so-called African-American communities and many of the Latino communities. It was unleashed on Yasharel, beloved. And we see it selling families mm, through her witchcraft. We have watched children not only taken away during the slave, the days of enslavement. When they used those corrupt laws, when they flooded the cities of Yasharel with crack, and they took the mother and the father and put the children in foster care, many not knowing that. When they gave that mother a felony, she lost all her parental rights and they put those children up for adoption. The mother never gave them away. And you have Babylon taking the children and doing what they will. Even to this day, we have watched her take families through her witchcraft. They have separated children to this day and dispersed them to the winds through her witchcraft, the lawlessness, the corruption, while wanting you to have a tender heart towards them and their families. Mm, mm. But what does the Most High say? Chapter 5, verse 5. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness. The nations are beginning to speak against Babylon. The stench and wretched corruption is so fetid that even the nations in the world are speaking on it. And the kingdoms thy shame. Yes, yes, they have seen it. Though they hide it, they have no honor, no honor. Mm, mm. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock. Yes, yes, the evil, the corruption. Beloved, we are in the book of Nahum. Now we are going back into the book of Ezekiel chapter 2. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed. Remember, it is full of corpses, this city. It is full of corpses, a, a testament to the evil of this bloody city. 
Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed, and has defiled thyself in thy idols which thou hast, and has caused thy days to draw near. Remember, he shortened the time. Time is speeding up because the judgment has come down. The judgment has come, beloved. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, even the other heathen nations, and a mocking to all countries. Oh, my, my, my. Yes, yes, they have. Those be near and those that be far from thee shall mock thee, which are infamous and much vexed. Yes, yes, he's talking through the prophet Ezekiel, these judgments that have come down against Babylon, against Babylon. Mm. And as they fall, they that see the I'm in the book of Ezekiel chapter 14 at the 16th verse, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the whole earth to tremble that did say kingdoms mm. that made the world as a wilderness. Yes, no good thing has come. Suffering, division, and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. Beloved, during the days of enslavement before the emancipation went out at the end of the Civil War. There were approximately 4 million enslaved Hebrews in America. But right now in the year 2021, through that 13th Amendment loophole, there are a minimum of 2 million people locked up in prisons. And the greater part are Israel. Yasharel, using this, this Babylonian nation, has used that 13th Amendment loophole. Oh, slavery is illegal everywhere except punishment for a crime, except as punishment for a crime. So they have created laws, this lawless nation that does not even abide by their own laws to bring about a secondary enslavement where once again, they still profit. In the first enslavement, the first group of people that they targeted were the young strong males because they could get the most work out of them. They did bring in the females and they did bring in the children, but the first group was the young strong males because those were the number one workers they were after. And if they could not control them, they killed them. When you look at Babylon now, the first group that they target are the young strong males, taking and imprisoning them through the loophole of that 13th Amendment because they have made a business, a billion dollar industry through prison labor. These lawless people who put unjust laws on Yasharel. And what does the Most High say? Because he knows what they have done. That open if not the house of his prisoners. Even, you know, the Bible says even the kindness of the wicked is cruel. Many of them now say, well, we'll let them out of the jails because the jails are overcrowded. But they, they make money off of these people. What they do now is they make ankle bracelets and arm bracelets, a whole industry to monitor the people while stripping them of their rights with these lawless laws. Why? Because at any given moment, they can re-incarcerate them for any slight. They open, if not the house of his prisoners, with the mindset, just like in the first enslavement, 
Either that mail is going to work for me. This is a billion dollar industry. That loophole of the 13th Amendment needs to be removed because they have used it to enslave through prisons. Yashara. Before slavery came to an end in America, most prisons had white male populations. There were very few Hebrews or so-called African-Americans in prisons because they had them on the plantation where the so-called slaveholder had the power over them. But upon emancipation, they created laws, vagrancy laws and trumped up laws to lock them up. And suddenly the prison population grew exponentially filled with Yasharel, the so-called African-Americans, many of which at that time were forced to go back to the same plantations they had been freed from to work for free prisoner lease programs. Why? The Most High spoke about it. He said they'd open not the house of his prisoners. And the first group that they targeted then, just like they target now, they went after the male first. They also went after the female and the children to bring either I will control or destroy Everything you have, everything you create, even their inventions, they lie and try to take credit then and they try it now. That's why the world copies Yasharel's culture and behavior, but they dishonor Yasharel wanting to be like that which they claim not to like. Mm. We're going to read it again, beloved. We are in the book of Isaiah. Forgive me. Forgive me. Chapter 14. Trying to go back to the verse. Bear with me. When they fall, when they fall, Babylon's judgment is certain. Just like Pharaoh, whose heart was hardened and would not let the people go. You have this nation that has no right to Yasharel. Our true history up until the days we became enslaved had nothing to do with these people. Nothing. And before they got to commit debauchery against us. They committed debauchery and wars against one another. This is a warmongering people, all right? But when they fall, mm, mm. see in 15, it says, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Yes, the judgment is certain. They that see the, thee shall narrowly look upon thee. And consider these saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? They made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. All you have to do is think of all these unnecessary wars. All these bombings to steal the resources of these same people that they will try to call criminals. When it's the criminal calling the victim the criminal, mm, trying to transform themselves into an angel of light. See, when they talk about Satan and all those that belong to the evil one, they transform themselves to an angel of light, trying to look like that which is good, a deceptive entity that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. No mercy, no mercy, beloved. Mm. But we go back mm. to the book of Nahum. 
where the Most High is speaking. Chapter 3, verse 5. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. The world knows. I will cast abominable filth upon thee, and make thee vile, and set thee as a gazing stock. Yes, beloved, when we go back and we look at verse 3, chapter 3 of Nahum, it speaks about the multitude. There is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses. The murderous rage that goes on to this day, the most high, the judgment has gone out. It will not resent. No, beloved. And there is none end of their corpses. No, there is no intent to stop. Mm. They stumble upon their corpses. This is how great the number of their murders are. Mm. See, but the Lord has a word. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. And I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. And I will show the nations thy nakedness. Everything they do is bringing it about. He sped up time, beloved. As I commune with the Most High. And he told me, read Nahum. My first thought was the city of Nineveh. Nineveh repented. Babylon has not and shall not. Because their heart is hardened. Yes, beloved. We will go down to verse 19. There is no healing. That's it. There is no healing. It's not going to get better for Babylon. It is written. It is spoken. And it has begun. And it is going to speed up. There is no healing of thy brood. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap hands. The entire world will celebrate the fall of corrupt, fetid, murderous, brutal, unmerciful Babylon. For upon whom have thou not, have not thy wickedness passed continually? Wait a minute. We're going to read it again. There is no healing. See, there's going to be no healing. No healing, beloved. This wickedness, this evil, the corpses, the murder, the nations that have been affected. Mm. There shall be no healing. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brood of thee shall clap hands. Praise God. Is it over? Who is it over? For upon whom has not thy wickedness passed continually? Whom have they not done wickedness to? This is the word of the Most High Beloved. I was reading the book of Nahum when the word came to me. And I said, Lord, Nahum was talking about Nineveh, but Nineveh repented when Jonah walked through the city 40 days. Nineveh repented of her evil. But this word, the Lord said, is for Babylon. Babylon repenteth not. Her heart is hardened. And judgment has gone forth, beloved. There shall be and there is no healing of thy bruise. No healing. There shall come no remedy shall they find. None, because the judgment came from the most high. He is jealous for his people. There shall be, there is no healing of thy brood. Talking to Babylon, thy wound is grievous, and all that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. Praise the Lord. Well done, most high. For upon whom have not thy wickedness passed continually? Yes, beloved, yes. Will not let their prisoners go. They have piles of corpses testifying about their wickedness. 
And the judgment has come from the most high, beloved. The judgment has come from the most high. When I was reading, I was communing with the Lord. And this is the word I'm like thinking, well, this is Nahum. And he's talking about Nineveh. The Most High said, now I'm speaking of Babylon. And the Most High is jealous. Understand, and the Lord revenges. The Lord revenges and is furious. Mm. And he will take vengeance upon his adversaries. And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Yes, yes, yes. Beloved, the Most High is jealous. And there will be no healing for Babylon. Does not repent. Their heart is hardened. And the judgment has gone forth. A word, beloved, from the Most High. A word. Shalom. I believe this is still recording. Yes. A word. Shalom.